of 15 Good Minutes. I'm Shy, and today we are going to talk about how to turn a hobby into a passion. I have a guest host today, Mr. Glenn Washington. Welcome, Glenn. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. Good. So, Glenn, tell us a little bit about yourself before we dig deep into the story. Uh, so, I'm originally from Baltimore, uh, Tuskegee graduate, architecture was my major. I uh, was practice for, practicing architecture for a while, and... I, I'm into consulting now, so then I got into photography a little later after that. I heard you're from Baltimore. Yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh. I feel sorry for you. Oh, whoa, Steelers. Okay, great. Purple Pelicans. Oh, uh, now that we got the that Ravens, out the way. not the Pelicans, <laughs> but okay. We'll move past that. Wow, so you went to school for architecture. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And now you're in photography. Pretty cool. Yeah, so photography, I found that a little later just because I wasn't practicing architecture anymore. I wasn't designing, mm -hmm. and I needed like a creative outlet, so that's where photography came in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, what, so what actually got you into photography? Did you always like pictures, or did you just one day pick up a camera and was like, oh, this might be fun? I just one day pick up, picked up the camera and was like, oh, this could be cool. I can, uh, I can see myself doing this. I got like a, a cheaper camera at first, and I, feel, I felt like I was good at it. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was like, all right, let me take this a little more serious. Let's, uh, you know, upgrade the equipment. Let's upgrade everything that I'm doing. And I just never let it go after that. Did you take any courses? No, nah, all okay. self-taught, yeah. Nice. Do you develop your own pictures? Well, it's all digital, so there's no developing. Perfect. So it's no, okay. it's no darkroom or anything like that. Okay, cool. That's really cool. So as you go out and you take pictures, what, what strikes your attention? What inspires you to just capture on camera? It depends on what kind of photography I'm doing at the moment. Like, mm -hmm. if it's street photography, just the, the authenticity of what's going on in the neighborhood on the street mm -hmm. or in, like, the day-to-day -day life of people. If it's in the studio, it depends on the client. Like, depends on what they want to do. What they want to do. So, do you always have your camera on you? I try so you to. 90% of the time, I try to. It's, it gets hard sometimes, but I usually mm -hmm. do. I have one. I got two cameras, so I usually keep, like, the smaller one on me all the time. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because I, I would know you would probably be like, oh, that would have been a good shot and I don't have a camera. Right? That's the worst feeling when you see a shot and it's like, damn, like I should have got that. I should have captured that. I just that. my phone. That doesn't yeah. do it justice, right? Right. I mean, sometimes, I mean, if you got the new, the iPhone, the, the new 7 camera is really good. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it depends. Oh, okay. Well, good to know you're always prepared. Yeah. So what do you hope to accomplish through your photography? I know you're still working, but. Through, uh, through photography? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really have an end goal, to be honest with you. I just kind of want to capture great images and tell certain stories. Like, I just want to get certain stories out there. Would you see yourself maybe doing, like, a, a photo gallery walk or having an exhibit at a local gallery or festival? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, like, uh, a lot of places in Baltimore do, like, consignment. Like, you can uh, display your work in, like, cafes, restaurants, mm -hmm. things like that. And off of consignment, they'll... Uh, you know, they'll reimburse you and whatnot, but also like just art studios and stuff like that. I would love to have like certain projects displayed for mm -hmm. sure. Have you ever had any work displayed at all? No, I haven't been at it for that long okay. to have too many projects uh, out there, but you know, that's the goal in the future. Like this year, this year I want to do more storytelling projects mm -hmm. and that's what I want to do. I want to put that out there for the people to see. How long have you been doing photography? A little over a year, so okay, not that well, that's long. that's good, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're moving fast, though. Yeah, I think I've come a long way in a year. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. So I, I was doing my research on photography, and I know there's different kind of styles a photographer can choose and, like, have, like, their mastery style, right? Yeah. So I, I read, like, there's, po um, not poetry, portrait, <clears throat> like mm -hmm. portrait shots, and you said, like, the storytelling. What is your kind of niche, like, your favorite uh, portraiture. I enjoy, well, I think they go hand in hand, but I enjoy portraiture because it's one-on-one. -on -one, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. Like when you trust somebody to take your picture, like you really trust them. Like to sit with me, you have to trust that I'm going to, you know, use your image responsibly. You got to trust that I'm going to capture you like authentic. Mm -hmm. So that's my favorite. But the storytelling stuff is, is dope as well. Like I'm working on a project where in Baltimore, I want to go through and, and capture like the abandoned homes because that's an epidemic in Baltimore. And that's yeah. the story I want to tell and put out there. I think that but, would be awesome. You know what I mean? They're both storytelling, but it's just different stories you're telling. But mm -hmm. portraiture would be my go-to favorite. Mm -hmm. So you would probably get more clients for portraiture. Oh, yeah, for sure. Nobody's going to pay me to take pictures of abandoned homes. You know? Well, you could use it, I guess, for like different organizations. They will have you come and take them with yeah, like, for different sure. campaignings, campaigning endeavors. or I could see that as a as an option. Yeah, I should definitely look into see? that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Hey, you know. So what challenges? I know you've only been doing it for... 
for a year and some months, right? Mm -hmm. But what challenges have you faced during your growth of being a photographer? Uh, number one would just be finding the information. Since I'm all self-taught, it's information out there on the web, it's information online, but learning from like your peers is best, but that's difficult to come by because a lot yeah. of people will be you know, hesitant to share their information. They're like, oh, you know, you're going to take my spot. Like, I'm not really oh, trying like to give you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's not nice. So that's one. And then two would be, it's not nice. Two would, be, two would be like just finding clients and actually making money. A lot of people would just lowball you on a price or a lot of people just want you to shoot for time or just shoot for trade. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. But to go back to asking people, do you feel as though, yes, it might be competition that they're thinking about, but for yourself, asking different people different advice, would that kind of like um, conflict you? Like different people giving different forms of advice. Like if someone says, oh, you should focus on your lighting and someone else should say, well, you should focus on your style. Would you know like... Like who to listen to right. and who not to? Right. No, I think it's all valuable. Okay. You know what I mean? Like some people are going to have different experiences. Some people have different information. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all the advice I get. I don't think any advice is bad. It's just trying to get it out of certain people is, mm -hmm. is difficult. You know, but the people who do share and the people who do give advice, like, I really appreciate them because they're forthcoming and, like, 100% forthcoming. Mm -hmm. Like, I got a buddy of mine. He's having a, a workshop uh, in February, like, February 22nd, and he's been the go-to person. But then I have another friend that I would reach out to, and he's, you know, he's very stingy with the information. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is, though. Yeah, that hurts my spirit. And me, too. It's supposed to be a hurts my pockets. Yeah, yeah. It hurts everything. So, you, do you feel like a lot of your friends want you to just, or not friends, or people that you know that know you're a photographer want you to do pro bono work? Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Like, the real good friends, the, real, the people who really support you will pay because they understand where you're coming from and where you're trying to be. But, like, the sometimes you friends or the associates... They'll be like, you know, they'll want to do the free work or the yeah. trade work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've been looking on your website. Let me pull it up because I thought it was pretty great. Your portfolio. Mm -hmm. How do you get your clients? Do you recruit them or do they just? It um, depends. It's 50-50. Some people reach out to me and I reach out to some people. And some stuff is just like on a whim. Mm -hmm. Like this one image uh, with the flowers behind a young woman. Mm -hmm. I had a client cancel and she was a friend of a friend. And she came through and sat for me, and we had some some great images come out of it. So, wow, yeah. so you just just have random random moments. Mm -hmm. I seen that you have black and white pictures as well. Yeah, let me go back. So, what is your purpose behind the black and white pictures? Like the the style, the St lighting, what? the style, the um, just the mood of it. To mm -hmm. be honest, mostly the mood, but it's it's awesome that you know, depending on like the gray tones, the mid tones, like you can capture vibrancy still. Or you can capture, you know, drama. So yeah. some of them are, dr are very dramatic and other ones are, you know, they're very happy-go-lucky. Right, because this one right here with this this woman here, mm -hmm. I think that is really, like, a really dramatic picture. Yeah, she was an amazing model, too. She was so professional. Uh, young. She's only 18. What? Young model, yeah. But she's going places for sure. And then this one with the lighting, it kind of, like, lightens the mood, right? Uh-huh. It's very overexposed. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she was a great model, too. She sat for me for, like, an hour and a half. We had a real great time. Wow, so do you have a studio or do you just pick places for for, for, for uh, I was renting space for a while from my, uh, a friend's studio on a monthly basis, but I'm not in there anymore. Okay. Yeah. These are really awesome. Thank well, you. guys, if you're in the area and you are looking for a photographer, hit me up. Give me a call. There Anova you go. Images on Instagram, anovaimages.com. Yeah, so talking speaking of Instagram, how do you feel about those those people that claim they're photographers through social media? <sighs> social media <laughs> is right now everyone's a photographer. Yeah. They're claiming to be a photographer. It's so easy to take pictures of people now. That's why that's why everybody's a photographer. Mm -hmm. And then the prices of the cameras have dropped so much as well too. Uh, so but you have some really good photographers out there. Let's start let's start on the positive. Okay. So that's there's, there's definitely positive aspects of photography on Instagram. It's easy to get your, your, your images out there, your voice mm -hmm. out there to many people. But on the downside, it's a lot of people putting out very poor work and calling themselves photographers. I agree. And it's certain type of images that are popular on uh, Instagram. Like the very uh, overly sexy, the baby oiled up, you know, big booty <laughs> type of joints on Instagram. King Magazine kind of Exactly, the King Magazine. Got gotcha. you. And, and that's what's popular on Instagram, and you can get big off of that. I know plenty of people with, like, 200, 300,000 followers off of that alone. That's crazy. Yeah, and I don't know if that's because of the photographer, but it's more because of the content, mm -hmm. I think it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So do, do people often um, hit you up on in your DMs, like, to, to get 
um, service or? Yeah, I have people sliding the DMs all the time over, uh, you know, trying to work. But weaning through, like, the, the serious people right, and the people with the BS is, yeah, you know, really you got to really know how serious. to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. I took photography class in high school and I loved it, but just never pursued it. Um, you should keep it up as a hobby. Yeah, but the thing that I loved was working in a dark room, and I know. I mean, film is still relevant. People know, still shoot film. I just like, I just think you gotta find so a dark room, bro. Yeah. Well, you can make one, can't you? Yeah, you can. You can. Right, you just need a dark room. Yeah. And the, and the chemicals, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that has always been a passion of mine. So I really appreciate your work and you doing this. Um, any other projects that you plan to do in the near future? I know you mentioned continuing your storytelling and doing your urban art, right? But yeah, more specifics, like any, let's say, any specific areas in the country you would like to, to shoot or uh, specific people. Specific people. So over over this next year, I want to shoot like uh, people in Baltimore as far as like the artists coming out of Baltimore, like the writers, the poets, the dancers, things like that, just mm -hmm. to show the world. This is tell Baltimore story, show the world that we have talent coming out of Baltimore because we're known for so many negative right. things. I would love to put a more positive spin on our city. So that's one project that I'm working on in 2017. An uh, ongoing project that I'm working on is called Bloom, and I've been looking at you know females, African American females with natural hair, pairing that with uh, floral patterns. So the texture and the color what? of floral patterns. You know that's what I'm going for. That's so dope because have you seen, I don't know whose work it is, but they're doing um, men's with beards. Men, no, I haven't seen men's that. Men's with beards. Men with beards and they're putting flowers in their beard. Okay, no, I haven't seen that. That's so dope to do it with natural hair. Yeah. So you have a real big thing with natural hair, huh? Yeah, I enjoy shooting women with natural hair. I think like it's a way of uh, expression. It's, it's, it's spontaneous. It's different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm into. And I think every, well, we can talk about this later, but you know. Every woman's natural hair is different. Yeah. It's not like not one natural hairstyle is the same, right? So I think that's really dope that you're... So how uh, how soon are you doing this bloom? Are you, are you currently doing it? It's current. It's, it's okay. an ongoing project. Okay. I started it uh, towards the end of last year, and I'll probably keep it going through the rest of 2017 just to that's build up nice. a catalog. And maybe come December of this year or January next year, I can uh, you know put it out as a project you know, get it in the studio or in a gallery somewhere. I think that would be awesome in a gallery. Yeah, yeah I think so, so too. So do you need models? Of course, always. I always need models. There's another plug. He needs models, guys. Natural hair. Only. Natural hair models, yeah. Natural no hair. No creamy cracking your hair. It has to be natural. <laughs> don't be don't be the uh the, the natural <laughs> Nazi though. Don't be that don't be that girl. <laughs> the creamy crack. No, I'm not against relaxers. I just don't use them. Well this is awesome. So do you have any advice for a young photographer, someone to aspire someone aspiring to be a photographer? Do you have any Just do your research, you know, do your research and, and read up on the history of photography. Read up on like the uh, you know, the John Whites, the the Avedons of the world. Read up on people who've done it before you so that way you know, you know, what you're getting into. You right. know the type of work that you that you should be putting out. You should mm -hmm. be putting out better work than these people who've done it in the past. That's one. And then two would be to just pick up the camera and shoot. Always shoot. Just continue to shoot. The more you shoot, the better you'll like get. Perfect craft. Yeah, exactly. And if you are a professional photographer and you are stingy with the information, shame on you. Yeah, please share. Be open. Help the next generation. We're trying to succeed out here. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what we're trying to do. Well, I think that we need another segment just to talk about natural hair and photography, don't you think? I'm with it. Yeah, okay. let's do it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to come back to you maybe next week or a week after, and we're going to talk about how dope natural hair and photography blend together. Yeah. Maybe you can kind of show us some of your work or expound a little bit more of your dream. Um, project. For sure, we can definitely do that. I'm looking forward to it. So now, time's running out. We're hitting our good 15 minutes. It's yeah. been a good 15 minutes, don't you think? It's been a great 15 minutes. It went minutes. fast, didn't it? It did go pretty See? fast. I told you. Right. Well, catch us later. Thank you for watching and it's been real.